Hey everyone, I'm John Negroni. I'm the film editor for theyoungfolks.com. I'm also the host of the Cinemaholics podcast. That's where I review lots of new movies every single week with my co-host from Cinema Blend, Will Ashton. Definitely check out Cinemaholics. If you're curious what I think about all the new movies coming out and you just don't want to wait, or if you want a deeper discussion, that sort of thing. And I'm giddy because I get to talk about Red Rocket. Red Rocket features two triumphant returns, two big comebacks. First of them being Sean Baker. Sean Baker, who last directed The Florida Project from 2016, also Tangerine, not long before that. And it's been five years since we saw The Florida Project, and Sean Baker is back. He's returned with another feature-length film through A24 once again. And even if you take out the quality of Red Rocket, the actual film of Red Rocket, it's just fantastic to see this guy back directing a feature-length film. Second, we have the comeback of Simon Rex, who stars in Red Rocket, and he is a force of unbelievable nature. And what I would say, this is one of the year's biggest, most remarkable comeback roles for any actor. Simon Rex, of course, was a prolific personality back in the 90s and the 2000s. He had a career on MTV, of course. He had roles in the Scary Movie franchise. He was also in a few TV shows like Baywatch, What I Like About You, and plenty more. The guy was simply everywhere back when I was growing up, and he actually really got his start as a pornographic actor, I think in like the mid-90s or something like that, right before he was on MTV. And around 2007, Rex transitioned into a career as a musical rapper. So that's where he's been for the last 14, 15 years. And I think, I I don't know this for sure, but I think it probably came about or had something to do with the parody he did of 8 Mile and Scary Movie 3, but that's just me guessing. And yeah, he eventually became known as Dirt Nasty. That's what a lot of people know him as at this point. So there's that. That's that's Simon Rex, but he's back in a film. He's acting once again. And looking at the story of Red Rocket, in which we examine a man in his 40s who's well past his prime as an entertainer, well, it's kind of easy to see how Sean Baker and his longtime collaborator and co-screenwriter Chris Burrach likely, I think, geared a lot of elements of this screenplay, this story around Rex's actual life. Uh, As far as I understand, they did already have this idea, but Rex was just fantastic casting and they just went really well together when we meet his character mikey saber we find out pretty quickly that he's a washed up adult film star who has left los angeles and returned to his hometown texas city in order to lay low and sort of recoup his recent setbacks and that may sound like oh you know coming of age like oh returning to his roots no 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 this is not that kind of movie this is not a sort of feel-good film, I should say. Now, Mikey quickly attempts to charm his estranged wife, Lexi, who's played by Brie Elrod, uh, just so he can get a place to stay, and it isn't long before he's kind of working the local community again, almost as if he never left. There's a purposeful recurrence of the NSYNC song Bye 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 in this movie that it kind of helps remind the audience, even though I doubt we needed it that this guy is a a relic of a recent but nevertheless bygone era one that featured and quite prominently like these strong masculine personalities who used to dominate pop culture I think it's kind of odd because Mikey arguably begins in the movie as a very sympathetic character. One we don't approve of morally, he's pretty disgusting, but we root for him because he's presented as an underdog, and it's hard not to root for underdogs in movies. But this movie, it methodically, over time and gradually, removes all of those false assumptions we make about Mikey, or we might while still selling the idea that this is the sort of guy who feels entitled to a level of success and prosperity in a country like America. This is a character study. Mikey is a pathological liar, and his politics are only geared toward his own self, but he's quick to recognize ways in which he can weaponize his charm and his bravado in order to sway just enough people to get by, Uh, these people being his own personal sycophants who will be far more loyal to him than he would ever be to them. 
Some of you might be picking up on what I'm hinting at here, and I promise it's not really a reach if you watch the film. Baker clearly made this movie in reaction to the Trump presidency as the film takes place during the summer of 2016, and he even flows in direct, a few direct references to the campaign to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, specifically Trump's first major pitch to be president. The film never comments directly on what the people around Texas City Texas City think of Trump or Clinton. Thankfully, like there's no dated pontificating or any easy layup jokes by the actors whenever Trump gets mentioned, like, oh, that guy will never win. They don't do any of that stuff, and it's fantastic. He just sort of sticks in the air, kind of like a, a virus sort of infecting or perhaps awakening something that was already in Mikey. Uh, he kind of becomes or comes back into being a showman who knows he's full of you know what, but it doesn't matter because he's targeting the truly gullible and innocent. Now, many films have been made about the last five years of American politics, but I think Red Rocket could very well be the first great one. It does it in a way that doesn't unfairly malign or glamorize or glorify the people caught up in the swell of populism and reactionary politics of this era. Instead, I think the movie brings forth a sense of location, time, and place, and lets the audience fill in what they might think about it. By the end of Red Rocket, it feels like we've spent months in Texas City, but the truth is only a few weeks pass, and we've been there for just a single moment in time, but you can practically map out the entire location and its landmarks by memory. Sean Baker is just gifted at making movies that have affection for these places without making it seem like these places are Main Street Disneyland. They're just places, and other movies can do it the opposite way, where these places could just be pits and we don't want to be in these places but that's not what this movie is either and i think that's one of baker's many gifts as a filmmaker and that he can pull back the curtain on the fringes on the undervalued margins of american life whether they be the dilapidated gas stations most movies never would bother to film or the various goings on of sex workers uh, comparing red rocket by the way to tangerine and florida project both of those being movies that cover all of that stuff you kind of get the sense that this this is the culmination of Baker and Burrach's entire creative ethos as modern filmmakers, complete with its dedication to centering mostly unknown actors, actors who aren't established professionals who miraculously hold their own against Rex at his absolute best. I'll point out real quick, too, this wasn't even supposed to be Sean Baker's follow-up to Red Rocket. Yeah, it's been five years. They were doing another film, and uh, because of COVID, they had to do this film instead. But it is kind of amazing how it worked out that this is the next thing to come from these filmmakers. Needless to say, I adored Red Rocket. It is currently my favorite movie of 2021. And it's it's not my favorite movie because I think that it's, it's saying anything that I believe already. It's not confirming any biases I have as an American. It's not about things where I'm like, yes, I agree with that and I like it. That is not what this movie is. I don't think that's what this movie is trying to be or should be. To me, this movie felt like a, a wave of understanding and relief. It's kind of telling you that, yeah, there's somebody here who simply gets it. And the fact that a lot of different people who likely disagree with each other on a lot of important things can watch this movie and come out of it with that same feeling of like, this person gets it without it being vague or generic or wishy-washy to the point of meaningless moralizing where you just have another movie, another screenplay that's just saying like, be nice. Like that is not what this is either. And I kind of love it for that. This is what films should do. They should make us understand one another better and more boldly, even when it's uncomfortable, while still being a thoroughly satisfying movie. It should be entertaining as well. All of that stuff is a priority. And Red Rocket to that end is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> if you're talking about entertainment, it really is entertaining. And I do think it's a funny movie, but never at the expense of the people in the movie. It doesn't gawk at these people. And I think it has just lots of fun bringing everybody in on lots of different jokes. And I think it really works. It has both a wistful and serious tone depending on the nature of any given scene. For example, there's a lot of grooming and exploitation that happens in the film between Mikey and a 17-year-old girl he wants to turn into a porn star. 
it is very upsetting to watch but that's certainly the point i think that's what the film is trying to say it never falls into the disgusting territory i think of making light of mikey's actions but it also doesn't redundantly wag its finger at the man either it simply exposes him full frontal for all to see it's up to you to decide if this is really the kind of man you want the kind of country you want the kind of society you want that's that's red rocket all right so extra credits this is the part where i try to cover everything else about the movie but these things aren't going to really go together they're just extra credit you get it okay uh cinematography not enough good things can be said about this cinematography in this film which is from drew daniels the movie was shot on 16 millimeter film it's gorgeous you can feel the sensory detail of that inclusion uh yes it's kind of a grainy movie but for this movie that really helps it helps sell the heat of the summer it helps sell the desperation in the air this is a rundown area that is stricken by poverty and it's shot like a real place where you can find vibrancy like that hopeful kind of vibrancy just about anywhere even if it's fleeting seriously it's it's gorgeous movie absolutely gorgeous there is a prominent dog in red rocket which might raise alarm bells for anyone who knows the slang meaning behind a red rocket don't look it up kids which i'm not going to get into i'm not going to define for you sorry but I i will say if you do know what that means don't worry there's nothing like that in the movie it's not a gross movie in at least in that respect it's actually fairly accessible lots of language of course this is a hard r but yeah i'd say that this movie and uh, it, it also has a, a lot of a uh, you know sexual you know content considering it is about an adult film star so you can expect that as well but yeah i think that about covers like the graphicness of it one last note about sean baker i really think this man is the future of cinema i think he's going to go on to inspire so many future filmmakers i think the next generation of filmmakers many of them are going to look at sean baker's work because he is a man who just he doesn't bemoan he doesn't complain the changes that are happening to film right now he's clearly somebody who champions the theatrical model and going to theaters and watching movies but you just get the sense from his movies that he's adaptable that he's not just trying to make movies that beg to be on the big screen but you can get the full enjoyment out of the big screen so i think that that level of care and focus into making a film is something that makes it makes him stand out because he doesn't just have that he also has the mentality of somebody who is young somebody who understands where society and culture is at and is just making things that wouldn't immediately be appealing like he's not playing it safe he's making things he's telling the stories that he wants to tell and i think that that goes such a long way in a film environment like this one where people don't want just the same old thing fed to them over and over again it gets diminishing returns with sean baker diminishing returns are not what you get this guy is just thoroughly and progressively just getting better and better so that is my review of red rocket i really hope other people like it as much as i do i think it's really really great it's going to be opening in theaters starting december 10th so this is a pretty early review but i think it might maybe it'll hit some select theaters i don't know in the meantime but if you do check it out at some point yeah definitely let me know if you agree with this review and if you have any of your own stray comments and observations on the film and have a great Thanksgiving. I think this will probably be the, be the last review that I do on here before Thanksgiving. We'll see what happens, but I appreciate you hanging in there I, with House of Gucci and this and a lot of stuff coming out, but I hope to be covering even more stuff as we really kick into gear with award season, hoping to be covering Power of the Dog and so many other things. Come on, come on, uh, as those films continue to get wider releases as well. So until the next one.